Abe and Henrietta, Two Full Measures of Devotion, Part 3, Conclusion, by Jim Surkamp. Abe Lincoln and Henrietta Lee, in October 1862, each wanted to give their heart to a wounded man. Beyond their feuding flags, en route home to the White House, Lincoln stopped in Frederick to give his heart to General George L. Hartsuff, while Henrietta Lee remained in her home, Bedford, in Shepherdstown, ministering to General Alexander R. Lawton. And Abe and Henrietta, with then heavy hearts, both besieged a diviner hand or invoked a timeless virtue for solace. Said Lincoln, I say this without any malice in my heart to those who have done otherwise. May our children and our children's children to a thousand generations continue to enjoy the benefits conferred upon us by a united country and have cause yet to rejoice under those glorious institutions bequeathed to us by Washington and his compeers. Wrote Henrietta Bettinger Lee, the fight near Sharpsburg filled our town to overflowing with wounded and dying men. Every vacant house, every church, and nearly all the private homes have been full. I have eleven, and with their attendants sixteen. Oh, how many desolate homes, orphaned children, and widowed mothers has this vile, cruel, and oppressive war caused. Ah, it is really too sad to see the new stranger's graveyard. There are many, many graves. What a season for reflection and self-examination this mortality should bring. Oh, I am in perfect fear that another battle will be fought here. God in mercy deliver us. Oh, child of my heart, how I long for quietness and rest. This poor letter must do now. Early morning, September 17, 1862, at the cornfield on the Antietam battlefield. By seven o'clock in the cornfield East Woods area, 13,682 men fought with 4,368 becoming casualties, or 32%. By coincidence, Hartsuff's Federal Brigade under General Ricketts directly faced, among others, Lawton's old brigade, now that Lawton was elevated to division commander. Lawton fell first wrote General John Bell Hood, On the morning of the 17th instant, about 3 o'clock, the firing commenced along the line occupied by General Lawton. At 6 o'clock, I received notice from him that he would require all the assistance I could give him. A few minutes later, a member of his staff reported to me that he was wounded and wished me to come forward as soon as possible. Being in readiness, I at once marched out on the field in line of battle and soon became engaged with an immense force of the enemy, consistent of not less than two corps of their army. It was here that I witnessed the most terrible clash of arms by far that has occurred during the war. Lawton was delivered, as were many Confederate soldiers, from the morning battle to Shepherdstown and eventually to the Lee's home of Bedford, soon to be among those eleven men there wounded or sick with typhoid fever. Edmund Jennings Lee, Henrietta's husband, was also home seriously ill with typhoid. Then Hartsuff fell too. 
wrote General Ricketts, on the morning of the 17th, the order to advance and occupy the woods in front was being carried out when General Hartsuff, who was examining the ground, was severely wounded and the services of this valuable officer were lost. Hartsuff was hit in the hip while on his horse, soon grew faint and was evacuated. The account by the 48th Pennsylvania Regiment historian was that the bullet penetrated deep into Hartsuff's pelvic cavity, couldn't be retrieved, and he was thus removed to Frederick, Maryland, as were most federal wounded, and where Hartsuff began a slow eight-month recovery. He was mending under the roof of the home at 119 Record Street, where Lincoln found him in the late afternoon of Saturday, October 4, 1862. Saturday, October 4, 1862, Sharpsburg, Maryland. Weather, cool in the morning, then warmer. President Lincoln and General McClellan visited wounded in the vicinity of headquarters. Lincoln visited fighting Dick General Israel B. Richardson, who lay mortally wounded at Pry House. They rode to South Mountain Battleground and concluded their survey. At noon, Lincoln's entourage took the National Pike east to Frederick, Maryland. Lincoln arrived in Frederick at 4.45 p.m. The party entered Frederick by West Patrick Street, passed through Court and Church Streets, and then stopped at Mrs. Ramsey's house to see General Hartsuff. A large crowd, principally of colored people, gathered about the house and cheered and kept cheering until Lincoln was compelled to come out and respond in a little speech from the doorstep. In my present position, it is hardly proper for me to make speeches. Every word is so closely noted that it will not do to make trivial ones, and I cannot be expected to be prepared to make a matured one just now. If I were as I have been most of my life, I might perhaps talk amusing to you for half an hour, and it wouldn't hurt anybody. But as it is, I could only return my sincere thanks for the compliment paid our cause and our common country. A short walk later down Market Street to the railway station, by popular demand, Lincoln demurred and ascended the platform on the last train car and told an enthusiastic crowd. Fellow citizens, I see myself surrounded by soldiers and a little further off I note the citizens of this good city of Frederick anxious to hear something from me. I can only say, as I did five minutes ago, it is not proper for me to make speeches in my present position. I return thanks to our soldiers for their good service they have rendered, for the energies they have shown, the hardships they have endured, and the blood they have so nobly shed for this dear union of ours. And I also return thanks not only to the soldiers, but to the good citizens of Maryland and to all the good men and women in this land for their devotion to our glorious cause. Then, thinking of the Confederate wounded he ministered to, Lincoln said, I say this without any malice in my heart to those who have done otherwise. May our children and our children's children to a thousand generations continue to enjoy the benefits conferred upon us by a united country and have cause yet to rejoice under those glorious institutions bequeathed us by Washington and his compeers. Now, my friends, soldiers and citizens, I can only say once more, 
farewell. At 10 p.m., the special train bearing the presidential party arrived in Washington. Mrs. Lincoln sent 1,000 pounds of grapes to military hospitals during the following week. July 19, 1864, the burning of Bedford, Henrietta Lee's home. On July 19, 1864, Henrietta Lee's home, Bedford, and its entire contents were set on fire and burned to the ground by the 1st New York Cavalry under the orders of Federal General David Hunter. The next day, she wrote a famous letter called A Masterpiece of Sublime Invective to General Hunter. At one point in the letter, she wrote, Hyena-like, you tore my heart to pieces. July 21, 1864, a joyous reunion of Hartsoff and his just discharged men. The very next day, Thursday, July 21st, far away in Boston, the men, once commanded by General Hartsoff and the 13th Massachusetts Infantry, noisily and joyously came home as their three-year enlistment expired. Bradley Forbush, historian for the 13th Massachusetts Regiment, wrote, When the remnant of the 13th Massachusetts returned to Boston at the end of their three years' service, General Hartsoff happened to be in town the day they arrived. Reading about it in the newspaper, he wandered over to Boylston Hall to drop in on them. Veteran Charles Davis wrote, while we were busy with our toilet or shaking hands with old comrades and friends, who should walk into the hall but General Hartsoff, our old Brigadier General? Joining hands, we formed a ring with the General in the center. If he had any doubts of our fondness for him, they must have been removed at that moment, for such enthusiasm is rarely seen. We had not met him since he led us through the cornfield at Antietam, where he was wounded and where we separated. Cheer upon cheer was set up in greeting to him until we were hoarse with the effort. The war ended. Of course, Lincoln was killed and time continued its cycles. Hartsoff would live until 1874. At the first 13th Massachusetts reunion dinner in December of 1868 at the American House in Boston, General Hartsoff addressed the attendance. Notwithstanding the greater size and importance of my Western command, my old brigade, which was my first love, was the strongest and truest the disincarnation of Bedford. After the war, the Shepherdstown Lees salvaged foundation stones of the ruined Bedford to build again on the other side of town, their home called Leland. Samuel Phillips Lee, a relative and rear admiral on the federal side, helped to pay for its construction. But the ruins of Bedford contained undying memories for Henrietta Lee of her childhood at the home built by Daniel Bettinger, a hero of the Revolution. When Bedford passed from her control at the forced sale in 1880 to a prosperous Union man in town, she wrote magnificently to herself. This day, Bedford the beloved home and birthplace of my dear father and sisters, as well as myself and two brothers, was sold. It has passed away forever from me. I have shed so many tears in the last ten years that I thought the font was dry. God alone knoweth. It has not pleased my father to grant this prayer and I bow submissively and humbly to his will. No tie of earthly goods remain to keep me united to the world 
my grasp upon perishable things is loosened and my wearisome journey to the end will be easier. Nearer to thee, my God, nearer to thee, even though it be a cross that raiseth me, thou hast given me the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet thine hand upholdeth me still. She made a final pilgrimage to the site on November 19th, making there a Shakespearean indictment. November 19th, November winds howl idly by. This evening alone, and sadly I turn my footsteps to Bedford. Now, Bedford, no more. The house and name dead. As I walk pensively over its once beautiful, now ruined grounds, I wondered what had been the special sin of my forefathers, that it was swept away from the earth with a wave of destruction scarce one stone upon another to tell it had once been a beautiful stately habitation of joy and happiness. My grandfather's home and my father's birthplace, as well as mine. And my heart asks, who did sin, this man or his father, that their home and memory are swept away from the children of man? Alas, who can tell? I called each dear familiar name of my childhood but none answered. There was neither voice nor sound. I stood in the ruin which was once my angel mother's room and called the blessed name Mother, but the cold gray sky only heard. I put my arms and faded grief-worn cheek upon every tree. That period is so far away and the flowing shadows of the present so entirely envelop my existence. Ah, oh, why is it that we cling so to life from the cradle to the grave? Tears are meted out to us. Has it been so with everyone born on earth? Yes, for all have sinned and sin brings sorrow and death. A beloved house is like a mother's bosom. Go from it afar, that we can never forget or cease to love and cling to it. Often, I wish I was miles and miles away from my scattered and ruined home, but there it is constantly before my eyes. Saddened, by what it is and what it was. A dozen or so years later, the aging Alexander Lawton made a surprise visit to the Lees at Leland. Lawton's wound in 1862 had required reassigning him to non-combatant roles. Each were stooped, gray, and still spirited in an undated letter written after 1893, Henrietta Lee wrote her now grown and married daughter Netta of his visit. Who do you think of all the wounded that found shelter and attention at Bedford came to see us on Saturday? General Lawton and his son. His family are up at Cape and Springs and he brought his son, a boy about 17, to see the Sharpsburg battlefield. He seemed very glad to see us and expressed himself most gratefully for our attention during his wounded state. I was very glad to see him. He seems in perfect health and very jovial. He was very indignant at the burning of Bedford. Now, my sweet child, my paper is full and breakfast is waiting. 
Love and kisses to all from your mother. <laughs>